You've heard of fintech, but what about insuretech? It is, as the name suggests, technology in the insurance industry. Well, South African insuretech startup All Life has raised a funding round from ASEAN Frontier Inclusion Fund that will support the company's expansion into innovative product lines and new geographies. Prior to that, All Life also recently announced an agreement with Royal London, the UK's largest mutual life pensions and investments company, for Royal London to leverage All Life's technology platform. In English, they're selling their tech to a London insurance company. This is The Money Makers. I'm Bruce Whitfield. I'm joined by the All Life Chief Executive, Ross Beerman, to discuss growth and new product lines. I mean, I call you a startup. You were a startup in 2005. Yes. No, finally, you've done something. Yeah, finally, finally. We've, uh, we've, we've, we've left South Africa's shores. We've morphed part of our business, at least, into an insure tech uh, business because of what we've had to do in South Africa. And, and where it was? So we started, we focused on people living with HIV, mm -hmm. and that meant we had to overcome some significant challenges along the way. We had to, l we had to learn how to provide product to an, a chronic manageable disease, a big chunk of the population. But in 2005 when you launched, HIV and AIDS were not chronic, they were chronic, but they weren't manageable. No, they weren't considered manageable. Uh, they've become more manageable over time as the antiretroviral technology has improved. Absolutely. Yeah. And what, what we did from the start uh, was we helped our clients live healthy lives. So we use data in a way life companies don't normally use data. So life companies normally say, let me use my data to price clients perfectly. And, th and that's what actuaries are employed yeah. to do in the traditional insurance company. Yeah. Do you use those same actuaries then to look at the data differently? Yeah, we, we look at it entirely differently. We say instead of using our data to price the clients perfectly, why don't we use the data to help our clients become perfect clients? So imp use the data to empower people to live long lives. The longer people live, the better it is for them, the better it is for us, so we all win. So really what we did was we changed the model in terms of, of helping people live long lives. So we, we help them manage their health, we help tell, them, tell people what to do, when to do it, and that changes the game in terms of provision of life insurance. Have you run out of runway in South Africa? Not at all. So 17% of the adult population is uh, HIV positive and we're continuing to grow into that, uh, into that space. In South Africa, we have a business of about 300 odd people in it. So it started from mm -hmm. nothing when we spoke to you mm -hmm. originally. There are about 300 people in that business and we're growing into the South African space. And then we said, well, look at what we've done here and where else is it applicable? And when you look around the world, the big disease in the world is uh, diabetes. Yeah. That's eight and a half percent of the global population. Because the demographics are interesting because here you've got in South Africa, 17% of the adult population may be HIV positive, but yeah. what percentage of that population can actually afford to pay an insurance premium? So about half actually. Oh, really? Yes, so, okay. so if, we, if you look at LSM six and up, uh, you're talking about two and a half to three million people uh, who, who are uh, living with HIV. And is that a profitable segment? So. Absolutely. I mean, so, so obviously there's, uh, there's some very small policies. The largest policy we've written to date is 12 million rand of cover to somebody living with HIV. So now, uh, and, uh, you've got to yeah. explain this to me because everybody's going to be saying, hold on a second, you're taking somebody w with a potential time bomb yes. and that time bomb um, is, is ticking softer now than perhaps it was yes. ticking 10 years ago. When did, you sign the, when, when did you sign this person up? So for that, for that person, we probably signed up in... 2008. But that's, there. Be, that's before massive advances yeah. in antiretroviral technology. Before, uh, uh, up until yeah. then, roughly, I mean, AIDS was seen as a death sentence. Yes, so it was, seen, it was incorrectly seen as a death sentence. And so but how did you know that it wasn't? Well, there's, <laughs> there's a difference between perception and reality. Yeah. So the, the great thing about, uh, about data is it ignores perception. It is mm -hmm. what it is. Um, so if you look at the data and you see if, if people behave in a certain way, they can live a long time but a very small proportion of the population is behaving like that. That means when you look at the total, it looks bad. But when you look at that small proportion, you go, well, actually... They stand out. Yes. So, mm. so instead of looking for those people, because there's not a lot of them, mm. instead of looking for those people, we said, well, why don't we just turn our clients into those people? And then that's the data set we get to play with. And that changes the game in terms of what you look at. And you could see that early. And because nobody believed that early, it, it meant it was uh, certainly an entrepreneurial opportunity mm. because it was a massive, uncompleted space. So you take that learning that yeah. you've got here over the last 12 years yeah. and you transfer that into insuring diabetics. Are, are diabetics uh, also regarded by the insurance industry of, of a high, as a high risk group? Yes, so there's, there's the, the two groups of people in life insurance. There's standard life, which is uh, kind of the, the average Joe, if you will. And then there's, there's, there are people called impaired lives. It's about 30% of the market. There's something, something wrong with you, right? Uh, you know, kind of could be diabetes, could be HIV, could be 
lupus, could, you could just be severely overweight. There's a whole lot of things. You don't fit into what, what the industry would call a standard life category. So about 30% of the market is impaired. And because we were operating in HIV, though, we saw a whole lot of other things that everybody else doesn't get to see. So because of the stigma with HIV, we couldn't go through intermediaries. Mm. So we, could, we had to go direct. So the first underwritten life policy sold direct in South Africa was actually sold by us. <laughs> yeah, so if you type in directlife.coza or lifedirect.coza, mm. you come to our website. Because we were the first direct life business, but we had to be. Because, because of the stigma, our clients didn't want to talk to intermediaries. Did you know that before you started? No, we didn't have, we, we, had, we had no idea. Yeah. Uh, we thought we would, we had a perfect product for 17% of the adult population. We would fit in with the existing And nobody bought it. Yeah, well, you know, if you build it, they will come. That's not a, <laughs> that's not a statement that, that you can live by. Mm -hmm. um, uh, if nobody knows about it, nobody arrives. And, 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 and traditionally, insurance is a hard sell product. Yes. Nobody wants to buy insurance. Yeah. I mean, they really need a good yeah. motivation in order to do it. And being living with a terminal, potentially terminal illness is a great motivation. Yeah. But, but it's only a motivation if there's the solution that's in the yeah. public domain. And uh, so, so when you deal direct with clients, what you see is, there's a, there's a big drop off in actually clients' interest in actually taking life insurance, depending on the speed at which you can serve it. So if you want life insurance today, and you don't get it today, then a month later, actually, it was a great decision not to get it, right? Mm. You saved. I've survived. I've yeah, survived. Yeah, and you saved the month's premium. premium. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's a self-reinforcing don't buy, <laughs> okay? And if you died, you don't know about it. Yeah. Okay, so you, you've left the problem no, behind. No, exactly. Yes. So it's not, it's not an issue anymore. So, so the faster you serve a client, the better. Mm. And when it comes to standard lives and impaired lives, there's a dramatic difference. Okay, so these impaired lives, yes. you're focusing on diabetics. Yes. And they're different kinds of this type one, this type two, diabetes. Yes. Um, and one is more dangerous than the other. One is hereditary, one is not. So, so not necessarily one is more okay. dangerous than the other. So the, the first thing is it is a chronic manageable disease. The one is simpler than the other. So, okay. so type one, which is early onset, and, and our medical director will yell at me for my explanation, but uh, uh, um, really what happens... He's hap not here. No, he's <laughs> not here. So, so really what happens is with type 1 diabetes, your body doesn't produce enough insulin. Yes. So you add insulin to make up for the piece that you're not producing. Problem right? solved. Problem solved. You've got to measure, you've got yeah. to track, and that's early onset. You see people injecting. That's, that's, kind of, that's, that's type 1. Type 2, you are producing enough insulin. In fact, you have produced enough insulin for quite a while you've stopped using the insulin you produce correctly. So it's more complicated. Something else has gone wrong. You can still add insulin to solve the problem, but there's something else that's a more complicated mm. disease, and that's kind of a, as a result of genetics and putting your body under stress, generally weight. So now you're taking yeah. the learnings that you've got from HIV, yeah. from the learnings that you've got yeah. from diabetes, and you've got a, uh, uh, your grandfather. Yes. Was your grandfather diabetic? Yes. I mean, that must motivate and inform, perhaps, the way you think about uh, a chronic yeah. illness like this. Abs absolutely. My, my grandmother. Grandmother. My, grandmother. No, my grandfather was diabetic, yeah. but my grandmother used to say that the best thing that happened to them was him becoming diabetic. Because in his 30s, they changed their lifestyle. They became fit and they ate healthy, and they lived longer and healthier and better lives than most of their peers. And she said that the best thing that happened to them was him getting diabetes because it changed their, yeah. their actual outcomes quite dramatically. But that informs your attitude then yes. towards the way in which you treat this particular category mm -hmm. of people to insure where the rest of the insurance industry might be less yeah. interested. Well, so, at, and this is the interesting thing, is theoretically you can get life insurance if you're a diabetic. Yeah. So if you're living with HIV, it's much more difficult, but if you're diabetic, you can theoretically get life insurance. On average, it takes you about six weeks to get a quote. And this is, this is where we come in, mm -hmm. right? Is that, so if you're, a, if you're a, 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 a standard life, you can get life insurance today. If you're a diabetic, it takes you about six weeks to get a quote. There's a nice study done in the UK that said 80% of diabetics drop out in the process of getting life insurance. Because the process itself is so painful, takes so much time, no, just to get a price. And it's dull. That's, 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 and the reason you wanted it, you've forgotten by the Correct. time you actually get the price. So, so life companies offer it. About, so in South Africa, 8.5% of the population is diabetic, about 12% of the adult population because of this, the skew but, but, to but, young. But, but you see it in the UK and you see an opportunity and mm. you see a window of opportunity because I bet your bottom dollar, the moment you do it and the moment the rivals in the UK, yeah. all, uh, Royal London's rivals, uh, see, you see that your success in this, 
they're going to pounce. So but, but have you got a narrow gap of opportunity? What, well, no, because what we do is built off of this, this decade of experience in South Africa. So, so, so what happens for us? So six weeks to get a quote if you go to somebody else. And if I use, this, mm -hmm. if I use the UK example, 10% of the adult population, but only 2% of policies are sold to diabetics. It tells you there's, a, there's an issue there. We come along, the first policy that Royal London sold with us last week, 14 minutes <laughs> from start to finish, okay? And we do that because we use data in a different yeah. way. We, we underwrite you in a different way. We, 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 we change the customer experience quite dramatically. And it's all because of what we've had to overcome in South Africa. So we can do something unique, not just in the UK, but all around the world. Um, so. So, so the, but the, UK, the UK is a global bridgehead for you. How, yeah. do, how do you get paid for it then? Do you take a percentage of every commission uh, yeah, paid? So, so, so it's, it's through a license arrangement. Um, but in effect, we participate in the, uh, in, in the value creation over time. Okay, so, so I mean, this is South African grown. This is yeah. South African developed. This is now the bridgehead in, in the United Kingdom. Yeah. Are you discuss, talking to other global players yeah. in, in insurance? Or are they waiting to see how Royal Under works out? Well, you know, so, so, so first we'll be backed by January. Um, uh, part of Berkshire Hathaway, mm -hmm. Warren Buffett's little I'm business. I saw him last weekend, yeah. actually. No, no, exactly. It's, uh, <laughs> um, I, I can't say we've met, but uh, but they support us globally. I can connect you. <laughs> <laughs> Super. <laughs> so, um, um, uh, they they back us around the world, so they they're a massive global global brand. And uh, you know, when we when we had a chat with them, we said we want to go to one country first because the first thing is to show that your technology works in a first world environment. Because you know, when you talk about South Africa, people have no idea of what this market is. Uh, but they do understand the UK. So, so we said we want to speak to people in the UK and, and January said, fine, we'll support that. And they, they, uh, they passed the top five life, CEO uh, life CEOs passed me in London. And we got to choose our partner. Um, and uh, Royal London, they've got a great customer focus and it's, and it's very important having impact on customers' lives. And they, they're a massive business and really it made, they made this a high priority for them. So, so we found a, a great partner and then it was about integrating our IT into their, into their environment. So if you come into Royal London space and you, you log on and you want to buy a policy, you see all Royal London's branding, but actually you're in our environment. Mm. And it's our, our software that's actually running you through a process to, to, to price you and to make it simple and easy and straightforward. Any glitches so far? Nothing material. Nothing ever goes smoothly. <laughs> yeah. so, 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 uh, so some minor errors that, uh, that pretty much nobody notices but us in the background. Mm -hmm. But uh, actually, it's, it's, it's been dramatically smooth. A, a long process to get out there. In a week, how many policies? Uh, so we've done more than 100 quotes, and we only have three brokers live in the whole of the UK. <laughs> out of 6,000 of their, Early days, their yes. distributors. Yes. Ross Beerman, nice to see you. Thanks very much indeed. The All Life Chief Executive, Ross Beerman, bringing us up to speed with All Life. Homegrown, home developed, and now expanding internationally with a bridgehead in London. Other moneymakers on future shows for now. Rest well. Good night. <laughs>